My friends, here we are on Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent, a day filled with joy, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate than to go to confession. And so today I see Father Terry is hearing some confessions today. I'm going to step in, get my soul cleansed to start out this great third week of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been about a week since my last confession. My sins are, Lord, as you know, I continue to struggle with awesomeness. I just can't seem to hold it in. And I'm the cause of great jealousy among my classmates and the presbyterates. Uh, but it's really not my fault. It's the way I was made. But I suppose I could try uh, to hold that awesomeness in a little bit more. Also, Lord, I don't seem to be as attentive to your will as I should be. I know that you're calling me to be the first American Pope, and that's a great honor. I'm honored to have that invitation from you, but... I have deep concerns that the Wi-Fi connection in Rome is just not going to be as strong as here in the United States. So I'm just wondering if you would consider moving the papacy to the United States. Then I wouldn't be filled with so much fear at the proposition. Um, Lord, as you know, I have a boss that's really difficult to live with. He... Uh, is always eating my ice cream. He makes me work all the time. And he's just not fair. And yes, Lord, I get it. You know, he's really awesome in the sense that he can go skiing and and uh, he has really awesome hair and, and uh, he um, can build pretty cool buildings and I would say probably most of St. Peter's loves him. He's a pretty good pastor, but I just don't feel that he's really as awesome as I am. I'm sorry, but I try to see things as they are, and that's just what I see. And so, Lord, I hope you'll understand as I begin to plot to take over this parish and to become the new pastor within the next couple of weeks. I have all my cards in place, so... Lord, uh, please help me on this uh, new venture in my life. And um, let's see. Um, well, I think that's really it. It's been a pretty uh, good week. So for these and all my sins, I'm fairly sorry. First of all, this isn't Father Terry. This is your pastor, Father Steve. And second of all, your penance is a year of no Wi-Fi. All right, here we go. It's the third week of Advent, and I have three heroic ladies that I'd like to talk to you about today on this Gaudete Sunday. The first heroic woman that I'd like to speak to you about is Miriam. Miriam comes to us from the Old Testament. She is indeed the only woman of the Old Testament to share the name of our Blessed Mother, which Miriam is the Hebrew name for Mary. And Mary is the dear older sister of Moses. And before Moses was even old enough to do anything, Miriam was already saving the day. For when Miriam's mother sent Moses down that river, hoping beyond all hopes that Moses would be found, Miriam followed her little brother down the river and ensured that he found himself in the hands of none other than the daughter of the Pharaoh, who took very good care for him as he grew up. The next time we really hear a lot about Miriam is when they cross the Red Sea and the Israelites find themselves in the freedom. And what does Miriam do? She dances before the Lord in jubilation. 
And indeed, Scripture at this point calls Miriam a prophetess. She's the first prophetess of the Old Testament, which I think is just pretty awesome. But, you know, Miriam wasn't perfect. Um, when Moses decided to marry Zipporah, she was really upset because Moses, uh, Zipporah was a Midianite, and she did not approve of that, and she kind of got Aaron behind her, and she began to gossip and cause trouble. So she was, you know, a flawed character. Uh, she wasn't perfect in every way, and she did receive punishment for that. She received leprosy, but it was through the prayers of her brother that God brought healing to her. And indeed, Miriam lived a long life, and she finally died and was buried at the end of her life in Kadesh. Miriam teaches us in many ways just how awesome you can be and just how when you allow yourself to be prompted by the Lord, you can do many awesome and amazing things to carry out his salvation. My friends, the next holy woman I'd like to speak to you about is Rahab. Let's go forward a couple of years in time. The Israelites are way through the desert now and have entered into the land of milk and honey. And Joshua is leading his conquest throughout the lands. And today, they are looking at a town called Jericho. But in order to get in, Joshua needs to have a few spies hidden within the town which will require somebody to be brave and to put themselves in grave danger. The woman who is brave enough to take up the task is a woman of Jericho named Rahab. And Rahab indeed risks everything to save her whole family because that's the deal. If Rahab allows the spies to stay there, then when Joshua burns down the city and takes it over, her family will be spared. Indeed, Rahab trusted in this God of Israel, and she, through her trust, saved her entire family, and she entered into the family tree that would eventually lead to the coming of Jesus Christ. The next holy woman I'd like to speak to you about is Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite who married into a foreign family and during a famine in Bethlehem she ended up losing everyone her husband and her two children and instead of returning to her hometown to her family she told her mother-in-law Naomi that she would not abandon her she was loyal to her and indeed she remained with Naomi and the people of Israel and while she was working one day in the field, she met a good gentleman named Boaz. And she fell in love with Boaz and her mother-in-law, Naomi, was so pleased with how faithful Ruth had been to her through all these years, she actually encouraged her daughter-in-law to marry again. Boaz, is not some random character in the Old Testament, but indeed he was the son of Rahab. And thus, through the loyalty of Ruth, she enters into the family of Jesus. Because we know Ruth would become the father of Obed. Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David, whose genealogy would eventually lead to Joseph and then to Jesus. My friends, as we come to the end of this video, we want to light the third candle for Gaudete Sunday, indeed the pink candle that represents joy. We also don't want to forget to push the Advent tab down uh, on our Advent calendar.
All right, so that's all out of the way for now. What I want to challenge you to do this week, this third week of Advent, um, as you might have guessed from uh, that funny opening clip that we, uh, Father Steve and I shared with you, I would like to encourage you to take advantage of the Sacrament of Confession. What a great and powerful way to cleanse the soul, to prepare it for the coming of Christ at Christmas, so you can truly invite Him into your very souls. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, do I have to go to confession? I just don't like going to confession. Well, let me be honest with you. Neither do I. Nobody really likes going to confession. It's kind of like running. You know, I'll go run for six miles, and I'll come back, and I have some strange people that will ask me, Oh, Father, don't you just love running? No, I don't love running. Who loves running? You don't love running for the sake of running. You love running for what you get out of it. I count down the minutes until the end of running. I love when I come to the end. I'd much rather prefer to eat chocolate and sit in my lounge chair and watch Netflix all day. But I know I will feel much better if I go out for a good run. In the same way, we may not enjoy going to confession. That's kind of a normal part of life. But we know that it is good for our souls, and we feel so much better afterwards to truly let all of that stuff in our soul go, to give it to God so that we can be filled with joy at the fact that He loves us so very much, that our God is madly in love with us. So I recommend this week to make a good examination of conscience and come into the sacrament of confession so you can hear those words prayed over you. I absolve the words of Jesus Christ over you through the weak instrument of the priest that is before you um, so that you can know with certainty that your sins are forgiven. That indeed is the whole point of confession. And if it's been a while since you've been to this great sacrament, just tell me, or tell whoever priest you go to. I think we have a pretty good idea of how confession goes, so we'll walk you right on through it. It's no problem at all. So come, get that soul cleansed, and re be reminded that our Lord Jesus loves you so very much, and he desires to renew his friendship with you this very day.